So the first thing we do is like we per just uh, put a string line on the front side because that's a, our known. So if you just want to drag that down to the other end, somewhere kind of down by that stake. All right, guys, welcome back. We're going to be laying out and drilling footings today. So layout is the most important step of your build process. So we always know one side is known. So we're just going to run a string line across. I met with the client last night. We decided where the front of the building is going to be. So that's what we're going to do. Just run a string line um, from point A to point B, and then we will work from there. Just got a little purlin nail in here. this on that purlin nail and bring it that way. Go to 80. 80. Right there. All right, so this building's 80 feet long. So we'll put one here. Okay. Now, Jake, if you want to set the two batter boards, you guys can do that. So now we know this is the front of our building. We can just leave that set there. And then on each corner, we take a board. It's got to go across like this. So we can attach a string line here to go that way, and then a string line here to go that way. We'll just take these stakes, put one, just drive one right there. Okay. Uh, just set the stakes, Jake. We'll set uh, the height with the laser. So that'll sit like that, but we're going to set these with laser so we're flat all the way around. All right. So now the next thing, once Jake's done doing that. So we have our first side is set. So now we're going to use the 345 method to get our diagonals and get this building squared. So we'll hook, we'll leave a tape measure there, tape measure here, and we're going to meet it in that corner. And so the building's 56 foot wide, so we'll go 56 foot. And then whatever either our diagonal measurement is, which I already have that figured out. It is. 97, 7, and 13, 16. Can you remember that? <laughs> I'll try. 97, 7, and 13, 13 16. 16. <laughs> so I'll show you the... You good, Jake? Yep, yeah. pull a tape. Just kind of roughly that way. So our diagonal is 97... 7 and 13 sixteenths. So the way we get it square, we find our diagonal, and then we meet those up. So 97, 7 and 13 sixteenths, and 56. So this should be square then, Cash. Yeah. Alright. Where these two points meet. And then we'll just put a nail in. And then if you want to reel this one up and then take it to that point, I'll bring this one across. So you just have to meet these two points up. So wherever these two points meet, so 56, 97, 7, and 13, 16, we're going to line those up just like that. And we're going to put a nail right there. Check from there to there to make sure it's 80. 
cache if you want to get that one. Hook it on here and, and take it down there to make sure it's right at close to 80. All right, so all we did is we know, we have two known measurements. We have the length and the width. So we have 80 by 56. We use the Pythagorean theorem to find the diagonal, which was 97, seven and 13 sixteenths. And then we just meet those numbers up at the corners and that's how you get at the building square. So now we're gonna check the overall width to make sure we're pretty close. Close, Jake? Yeah. Four. Okay. So now what we'll do that we got it close is we're going to set all these batter boards with a laser and then we will re um, kind of fine tune these and start marking out our holes. So let me get the laser out. There we go. This is the highest. That's got to go up. This is definitely got to go up. This all dropped off. All right, so I found the highest point, which is that over there. So we'll set that batter board first, and then we will level up all the other ones with it. We started with that one. I zeroed that on our batter board, and I just like my string lines to run level. That way, I know measurements are as true as possible. If you're running at an angle, um, the length can be longer. I know it's a minor difference over something this long, but I just like to keep them all level. We have all these batter boards um, put up. We're gonna put our string line and just eye it up over the top of these nails. Jake, you wanna go to the other end? And then just uh, eye it up over the top of this, the nail for now. casts on Sunday, Sunday evening, there. three baths and a walleye. <laughs> Where at? Just two seconds. 
south my family's dock. Oh, gotcha. Up in Minnesota. You have four percent? Okay. Alright, so that's over the top, it looks like. Could be a little bit off. So let's hook. Um, let's do this one now. We'll get all these close and then we'll fine tune them. You got string lines out already, Jake? Yeah. I'll show you how to tie these knots. So you just take your, you probably have to do this a bunch, just take your hand underneath, grab it, wrap around. All right. <laughs> I have to show you that about six times. And then you can always tighten it with this too, that's kind of cool about them. Yeah. All right, now we'll do one here. I'm gonna run that one down that way, Cash. It's pretty good right there, isn't it? Mm -hmm. All right, hold on a second. Let me put this screw in. All right. Tell me when you guys are good down there. So you can see this line is about, I don't know, half inch that way. So let's kind of figure out what that is, eye it up. And then I'll put a new screw in a little over to the side. About that. Same distance. now so pretty good right there it's pretty close these are all close enough that we can pull our new measurement make sure we're good and then we can pop these out and start drilling I'm super pumped that I'm gonna be in the skid steer so uh, the good thing about being I don't know. I don't like to say I'm in charge, but I guess I am. Well, I'm, I'm going to sit in the AC. You're the only one that really knows how to run the Yeah, system. I'm not going to let anybody do that. You guys close? Yeah. All right. So now that we got all these pretty close, we'll recheck our measurements. So, the easiest way, I don't know if it's the easiest way, but... We need 80 feet from this point, so we'll add, let's see, it's five feet, six and a half, so we need 85, six and a half is where we need to be. The windier it gets, the harder this gets. Oh my gosh. More like a quarter off. It needed to be in that hole that I originally was in. Three feet six, three feet six inches. Yep. So we got to add three feet six because he's hooked on this screw. So we have to add this dimension. So fifty nine six. We're money on that. So leave that hooked there. Actually, we're gonna do the diagonal, which we're gonna have to put a screw in the back. Remember, so I can pull. Are you hooked? Yep. All right, how much do I, is it going through the center? Not yet. Two foot, three and a quarter. Two foot, three and a quarter. So that would be a sixteenth, 11 and a sixteenth, 99, 11 and a sixteenth, right? Oh, it's in a quarter. I need, I need to move that that way just to here. So 
this one needs to be 61.6. And this one, 61.6 money. And this one should be 99.11 and 16th. 99.11 and 16th money. Jake, take that one there, and then Cash will take this one down there, and we'll do that corner. What? How much do I need to add, Jake? Three foot eleven and seven eighths. So we're about 11 sixteenths off. That one has to go, you know, what I have to it add. Was, yeah, it was right at three foot six. Three foot six? Yep. So 56, three foot six, 59, six is what this one should be. That's money. So this literally just needs to get moved. They should need, what was it, 13 sixteenths, Justin? 11 sixteenths. 11 sixteenths. Seven and 11, there's 10. So I literally just need to move that about three quarters of an inch this way. GPSing it would be nice. You ever seen those cash? Uh-uh. Oh, there's some, like a lot of these guys that build, a lot of these concrete guys that do all the foundations have GPS units. They just plug it in and then they go until it beeps and then they know where to. It's pretty fancy. It is fancy. That's a sixteenth. Seems good right there. So now we can mark out our holes. So just a quick recap, we set um, our known side of the building where the client wanted it. Um, we got those pins set. We did uh, use our Pythagorean theorem to find the other two spots. Roughly marked them, set up our batter boards. Um, leveled our batter boards, and then we went back and fine-tuned all our string lines. Now we know our building is square, and we can pull tape and mark all of our footings off and start uh, drilling them. All right, so this is the why making all your posts eight foot on center makes life a lot easier. So hold it, you're holding it at two, right? Yeah, burning two. Okay. So now 16-2. Good? Yep. Well, Twenty-four to I'm just gonna pull them. Twenty-four to thirty-two to good? Yep. Forty. that and then you wouldn't even have to use it you can just pull the string line out and okay. it's about the width of your foot right yep so if you just want to make a ring there we'll go over and mark this side out these measurements are always center of post to center of post yep. on plans so as I'm coming across here and I get to this door here, mm -hmm. that eight foot is the center of that post yep. to the center of this post. Okay. But our finished edge of our garage doors is the post. Yes. So if we 
if we just centered our column there, our garage door would be three inches too short on both sides. So I have to move the post over three inches. So I calculate that. So I put an arrow that the post is gonna sit like in that Inside. corner. Okay. Does that make sense? Yep. So then you have to favor, you just have to imagine that your post is gonna be you know, right there. And then we have enough room for our bracket to go on. Ready. Yep. And then we'll remeasure these ones with the garage doors just to double check. All right guys, so we got 34 footings laid out, dug. This is a um, 56 by 80, 19 foot sidewalls. 
I use a 16 inch auger, but the holes end up somewhere between 18 to 20 inches. So if you use an 18 inch auger, you're gonna end up two to four inches bigger than that, typically, depending on your soil. So that's just what works good for me. The holes are minimum, uh, frost here is 42 inches. I uh, do mine four and a half feet, so around 54 inches deep. Um, if you bring fill in, you want to get below that. So if you have to go seven feet to get to undisturbed soil, that's what I would do. Um, we do have a little water in the holes, which won't be a problem as long as we pump it out prior to pouring, which we'll do that in the morning. Concrete's coming at seven. So we'll get here early enough that we can get ahead and start pumping the water out and uh, we should be fine. But it's, uh, it took us about half a day to get this ready, 34 footings. And then one other thing we did, being that this building's so big and uh, it seems like we've had all kinds of tornadoes this year, I put some holes on each end and in the middle so I can attach chains to from these end walls to those. So they'll just be dead man's. The ones on the inside I'll leave, the ones on the outside I'll pull out after we're done. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. You guys, we uh, build post frame homes. I actually built uh, DIY'd my own post frame home, which you can check out that full series on this uh, channel. We appreciate you guys watching. Um, we have lots of services. We have home design. You can email us at design at mrpostframe.com and we can get you started on designing your own uh, post frame home or building. Um, we also have a Patreon where we talk about self building topics like um, footings, layout. Um, all kinds of things that will help you be successful when you self-build your own post-frame home. We appreciate you guys watching, and as always, we'll catch you on the next video.